It's Friday evening, the 6th of August. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel, and it's time for an Oroville update on the historic shutdown of the Hyatt Power Plant at Oroville. How about this pop filter for all you folks, all you people popping off about my lack of a pop filter? Is it big enough for you? Stay tuned. And for all of you complaining about the size of my mouse, you're just going to have to suck it up. I don't know why I've cranked up this mouse to the size of Mickey's big hand, and yet over here on OBS, it doesn't change the mouse size at all. So all I can do is move it around frantically, and hopefully you can figure out what I'm talking about. This ain't CNN, thank goodness. All right, here's the uh, Google map. We're talking Oroville Reservoir located right here. I want to show you, here's the Oroville Dam. Here is the Hyatt power plant located right here at the base of the dam. There's three power plants at the Oroville complex. The one we're talking about is the big one here at the Hyatt power plant at the base of Oroville dam. There's another smaller power plant here at the diversion dam that diverts the water from the Thermalito diversion pool into the Thermalito fore bay and after bay. And over here in between the, Four Bay and the After Bay is another, a third power plant, a medium-sized power plant. This power plant had a big-time electrical fire here quite a few years ago and took many years to get restored. This Thermalito power plant, I believe, is back in full operation at this time. So the whole idea of these power plants is to provide electricity. It's one of the main things that the Oroville Reservoir does. Of course, the number one function of the reservoir is for flood control, and number two is for water conservation to feed the Keystone Reservoir to feed the entire California aqueduct system and convey water from normally rainy or northern California to southern California. But now the water level has dropped to about 800, or correction, 640 feet. We'll look at that exact number here in a minute. To the point to where they can no longer use, for the first time in Orville history, the Hyatt Power Plant. We were very close to shutting down the Hyatt Power Plant during the drought, drought back in 1977, but the water did not quite reach that low. And right over here is the inlet to the Hyatt Power Plant, this gated structure that slopes down into the reservoir. And here's what this gated structure looks like today, thanks to... Uh, Gonzalo Peewee Curiel, a friend and resident there of Oroville. Here's the bottom of the gated structure. So there's basically no water <laughs> can even enter into the penstock to get into the power plant at this point. Or if it were able to, it wouldn't have the proper head pressure to properly operate the turbines down below. The whole idea of this gated structure is was to provide different temperatures of water you could draw water from different depths of the reservoir in order to somewhat control the temperature of the water coming out of the bottom of the reservoir to keep the fish happier downstream but here we are at uh the current well this is shot at uh july 30th with the lake level below the inlet to the hyatt power plant pen stocks Here's a model of how this works, and there's the gated. I'm not sure how the gates work on this, that they can allow opening and closing of these gates at different depths of the reservoir. But from this, they can somewhat control the temperature of the water that flows through the Hyatt power plant. Remember, the Hyatt power plant is the primary way of getting water out of the Oroville reservoir. Backing up the Hyatt power plant, of course, is the spillway. Backing up the spillway is the emergency spillway. And now we're going to have to rely on the fourth way of getting water out of the Oroville Reservoir, the river valve outlet system. More on that in a minute. Since I'm currently grounded due to smoke here, we're going to again rely on Pee Wee. This was shot on 1 August out of his Cherokee, just to give you an idea of what the current water situation looks like at this level at Oroville at this time. Here's the Oroville Dam here, the Hyatt Power Plant down here, emergency spillway located over here, main spillway over here. The water level reaching historic lows. So where did the water go? 
Here's the current situation at Oroville as of 8-6. Reservoir elevation down to 640 feet. Storage down to 857,000 acre feet. Outflow, total outflow, 3,111 cubic feet per second. Inflow, very little. Sometimes negative when you account for evaporation. River releases, 1,870. So this outflow number of 3,000 is the total outflow of the entire system if you read the fine print up here. So that means out of the uh, four bays and after bays and diversion pool. So if you take the 1,800 and subtract that from the 3,000, that means they're letting about 1,300 cubic feet per second out of the Oroville Dam, either via the Hyatt Power Plant or the River Valve Outlet System. So what's the size and significance of the Hyatt Power Plant? The power plant, the Hyatt Power Plant has a total of six turbines and it has a total power producing capability according to this literature here from UC Davis of 67,788 megawatts of electricity. That's if all six turbines are working together at once. And normally they usually have one of the six turbines out for maintenance. So you're normally only running about five of those turbines. 67,788 megawatts uh, and California, the average California house using about oh, 550 kilowatt hours per month, I believe it is. About That's enough electricity to power, I believe, about 80,000 houses knocked offline as a result of this low water situation. Here it also tells you about the Thermalito power plant, four generators, 119.6 megawatts of electricity, and the diversion dam of 3.4 megawatts. Right here they talk about these generators, three being conventional and three being reversible. Well, they don't do that anymore out of environmental concerns, but it's a great concept. You use the reservoir like a battery, and when the when you need electrical power for high electric demand, like during the evenings when everybody's coming home from work, you can run the generators hard and discharge a lot of water into the Thermalito diversion pool. And then during later on in the night when the electrical demand is very low and the cost of electricity is cheap, you can turn those pumps backwards and pump the water back into the reservoir from the Thermalito diversion pool and then repeat the cycle later. But that's no longer done. So where did the water go? Here's the lake level for 2021 starting in January. We started out with a huge deficit on rainfall to begin with. Remember the top of the Oroville Reservoir is about 900 feet above sea level. We started with only uh, 697 feet in January elevation and we only received enough rainfall to bring it on up to about 730 feet before the dry season came. And by releasing the water of the overall complex at a rate of about 3,000, 3,500 CFS to keep the ecology happy downstream, keeping the Feather River full and keeping the salinity out of the Delta. There are many competing interests for this water downstream so it's been deemed to go ahead and continue to release it at this rate of about 3,000 cubic feet per second. And that's taken only since uh, about April, late April to present to bring the water level down to 640 feet, its present condition, knocking the Hyatt power plant offline for the first time in Orville's history. So if you go back to last year, 2020, you can see that it started with a much better water deficit. We're basically using last year's water still at Oroville. The 2020 water season started out with only 790 feet, but again, a very light precipitation year in uh, 2020. That only brought the water level up to about 820 feet, still well shy of full. Normally, they can in a water year here at Oroville, you can get enough rain to recover this reservoir and fill it full even from a very low level at the beginning of the year but each year we just have been getting less and less rain 2019 is a better example of a more normal year it started way down here at 668 feet and with enough rain they were able to fill it up to 900 feet 
once they were clear of the flood control season and then draw that water down throughout the season and then start the rainy season over again in uh, November, December and start filling back up again. So now we're down to the last way of get drawing water out of the Oroville Reservoir. The river valve outlet system is the system that prevents the remaining water in Oroville from becoming a dead pool. You have to be able to release the water out of the reservoir until it's basically empty. The river valve outlet system has a long and troubled past here at, at Oroville. So here's the inlet, the gated temperature control inlet that we were looking at two inlets feeding two pen stocks which feed six turbines for the Hyatt power plant and those turbines end up discharging through the two diversion tunnels number one and number two these two diversion tunnels were the tunnels that were put in when they initially built the Oroville reservoir Inside of diversion number two is this river valve outlet system. So now at nearly the bottom of the reservoir is the last way that we're able to get water out of the Oroville Reservoir. And it looks like this river valve outlet system is all the way down to an elevation of nearly 252 feet. Now here's the design, the original design of the river valve outlet system that caused them so many troubles. You got a spherical valve here, another valve here, a baffle ring to slow down the water or take out some of the energy of the water, and then a pressure relief valve, and crews were required to come in here to operate the river valve outlet system. Well, over the years, this baffle ring began to deteriorate, so we're we're beginning to talk about what happened, what was the big accident they had with the river valve outlet system some years ago. So this baffle ring began to deteriorate, so they took the baffle ring out. But then they made the fateful decision to attempt to run the river valve outlet system without the baffle ring in place. And when, that, when they did that, the energy from the water ejecting through these valves was no longer dissipated by this baffle ring, pre created such a strong back pressure that it blew out this pressure relief valve and nearly took out the employees that were sent down there to open the valves in the first place downstream with them. Very, very dangerous situation. All of this has since been repaired and back into operation. After some teething troubles, and I understand there was some problems with the valves, the new valves had to be replaced I believe twice, they finally got an operational set of river valve outlet system valves located here in the RVOS system. The old ones are old and corroded, and the new ones are now in place, and they're now hydraulically actuated remotely, so the crew members do not need to be down near where this water is ejecting. They can operate it more safely from a distance in a separate control facility. So now instead of, instead of operating the river valve outlet system from down inside a diversion tunnel number two, they can be up here in the Hyatt power plant and operate the valves remotely. Much more safer setup. Here's a picture of the valves going in place and in operation. So the river valve outlet system has a total capacity of 4,000 cubic feet per second at an elevation of 640 feet. And of course that will go down as the water level continues to go down. So plenty of capacity to keep up with what they need, what they think they need to run in the Feather River at this time. Again, it's a matter of priorities. Are we prioritizing this correctly? That's a discussion for another time. Quick correction here. Tunnel number two, the diversion tunnel, is at an elevation of 225 feet. It's the main floor of the Hyatt power plant is at 252 feet. One more correction. I kept referring to the pressure relief wall as a pressure relief valve. The pressure relief wall is what failed and nearly took those workers to their death. And that 
pressure relief wall is designed to fail at 15 feet of head, and it did. So it's very important that they got this river valve outlet system in place and operational before the drought, the current drought. So that's a quick overview of the situation at Oroville at present. We are down to only one way of getting water out of the Oroville Reservoir. That's the river valve outlet system that may have even larger implications than the loss of the Hyatt power plant and the electricity that that power plant produces in itself. We can't afford to have any problems with the river valve outlet system from here going forward until we get more water, more rain in Northern California and we begin to attempt to replenish the Oroville Reservoir. Thanks so much for your support of this channel, especially over on Patreon that makes this content possible as more and more YouTube is demonetizing this content when we talk about these critical situations in California, particularly when it comes to wildfires, nothing but troubles with the folks at YouTube over that. Thanks again so much for your support. See you here.